to transform your life in 15 minutes. I want to take this time to express my gratitude and appreciation to all of you that are taking the time to watch this um, broadcast and even, even those that are watching the recording. What we're doing is we're doing five minute exercises, one each on the mind, the body, and the soul. And if this is your first time joining me, welcome. And I want to explain to you kind of the purpose of this challenge. The purpose is, of course, to transform your life in 15 minutes and or to transform your life. Not necessarily. It's going to be in, we can do it in 15 minutes, but the purpose of it is to transform your life. And how are we doing that? Again, we're planting seeds in each of the areas of your of your whole self. You have the mind, the body and the soul. So we're just kind of planting seeds of each of those with the hopes that the seeds will, of course, grow into something better, which they will, because we're planting really good seeds. OK, so we're going to harvest a really good crop. And I just want to remind you that there is a time to sow and there's a time to reap and it won't be in the same season. So be patient with your transformation. Be patient with what you're doing because it is working. And speaking of this, by the way, with what we're talking about in all, if what you're doing is working for you, then by all means, continue doing what you've been doing. I'm not trying to, you know, wipe out and put everyone on the same plan. That's not my goal at all. If what you're doing in life works for you, then please do it. But there's so many of you that you're struggling out there unnecessarily. So this is an idea. This is a way for you to try something different because in order to have something different, guess what? Yes, you have to do something different. So we're doing that now with the mind portion. Uh, this is the part that a lot of people, you know, they I, I'm getting ready to say, you know what? I used to read a lot. Well, not used to. I read a lot. But it's what I was reading. So it's in, it, when I'm saying the, the mind portion is about you know edifying your mind, it's not the fact that you just read. It's what you're reading. You have to read good stuff. You have to read positive stuff, stuff that's going to grow you. Um, again, if you love your Harlequin romances and you love your, your Pattersons and all that, that's great. That's fine. But find some time to put something new. Remember, if you want something different, you have to do something different. You know, a lot of times what we do is we work on one of the areas um, and forget the other two. Remember, we're mind, body, and soul. That's one. Our body is like a house. We have two. We have an inside and we have an outside. By just working on one area, that's like painting the outside of your house when the inside of your house is a total disaster area. Well, guess what? You live inside of your house. And the beauty of it is if you work on the inside, it's going to manifest and show itself on the outside. So again, that's what we're doing here. And particularly with this book is um, called Psycho Cybernetics by Dr. Maltz, Maxwell Maltz. We're reading this for the mind portion and he's explaining to us how our mind works, particularly our subconscious. And this is where all of our self image is stored and all the negative things that we say, like, I really can't stress, really cannot stress enough for you to stop saying, I can't stop using that word. You can. A lot of times and then stop being negative to yourself in general. Stop putting yourself down. Stop saying you're not creative. You are creative. Stop saying you can't do this. You can do this. OK, put that in those negative thoughts. And I know it's hard, but guess what? That's the beauty of the meditation portion of it, because again, in case I didn't say this before, the purpose of the meditation is to still your mind. That's the purpose of meditation is to still your mind. Now, yes, there's different types of meditation. I'm not saying that, but the one that I'm focusing on is the one where you're just still in your mind. And the reason why we're practicing that particular type of meditation is because when you still your mind, you're controlling your thoughts. And that's the main problem that we have myself included. I told you about my craziness that went on in my brain yesterday. So myself included, but the meditation helps you learn to control your thoughts because what you think will manifest. So if you say to yourself or think to yourself, I'm not creative or I can't do this, then guess what? You're right. You can't and you're not. So that's what we're doing with this challenge. Okay. So right now we're on chapter six and we're learning about different ways to um, to work with our mind so that it will help us because guess what? We are literally programmed for success and I'm not trying to make you feel like a failure. That's not what I'm saying at all. Please do not take that the wrong way. We are programmed for success, but our meters work either way. It can work as a success mechanism or as a failure mechanism, meaning what you really believe in. Of course, your thoughts turns into beliefs, but what's really programmed into your, to, in your inside is what's going to determine what the effects of your outside is going to be. So we learned about um, relaxation was the last one that I talked about and, and surrendering. But again, I'm not saying don't do anything. That's not it at all. What it's saying is stop trying to force it. 
Again, I stress, if what you're doing works for you, then by all means, you're, you're inside, your programming is perfect, or not necessarily perfect, but it's great for you and it's working for you. But if you're like finding, you know, you're anxious, you're overstressed, and you're just, you know, frustrated a lot of the times, and you just don't have any energy, you just don't even want to, you know, life is not fun for you, this could be the reason why. So I'm trying to help all of us, you know, program ourselves so we can like, transfer our, our lives and you, use the life, or let's just say live the life that we were meant to live, which is an abundant life. So in chapter five, or what are we on, six, I'm going to read underneath the title or the heading, The Secret to Creative Thinking and Creative Doing. Proof of the fact that we have been, proof of the fact of what we have been saying is true can be seen in the experience of writers, inventors, and other creative workers. Invariably, they tell us that the creative ideas are, are not consciously thought by the forebrain thinking, but come automatically, spontaneously, and somewhat like a bolt of a, out of the blue when the conscious mind has let go of the problem and is engaged in thinking of something else. See, I told you I wasn't crazy, <laughs> just creative. These creative ideas do not come willy-nilly without some preliminary conscious thought about the problem. All the evidence points to the conclusion that in order to receive an inspiration or a hunch, the person must first be, be of all be interested in solving a particular problem or securing a particular answer. He must think about it consciously, gather all the information he can on the subject, consider all the possible courses of action, and above all, he must have a burning desire to solve the problem. But after he has defined the problem, sees it in his imagination, the desired end result, secure all the information and facts that he can, then additional struggling, fretting, and worrying over it does not help but seems to hinder the situation. Henry Furr, the famous Swiss scientist, said that practically all his good ideas came to him when he was not actively engaged in work on a problem and that the most of his discoveries of his contemporaries were made when they were far away from their workbench, so to speak. It is well known that when Thomas A. Edison was stymied by a problem, he would lie down and take a short nap. Charles Darwin, telling how an intuitional flash came to him suddenly after months of conscious thinking that failed to give him the ideas for the need of the origin of species, wrote, I can remember the very spot on the road whilst, that, whilst in my carriage when to my joy the solution occurred to me. Lennox Riley Lohr, for the former president of the National Broadcasting Company, wrote in the American Magazine how ideas had helped him in business came to him. Ideas, I find, come most readily when you are doing something that keeps the mind alert without putting too much strain upon it. Shaving, driving a car, sawing a plank, or fishing or hunting, for instance. For me, is running. Or engaging with some friend or stimulating conversation. Some of my best ideas come from information picked up casually and entirely unrelated to my work. C.J. Suits, who was the chief of research at General Electric, said that nearly all the discoveries in research laboratories came as hunches during a period of relaxation, followed by a period of intense thinking and fact gathering. Bertrand Russell wrote in the book, The Conquest of Happiness, I found, for example, that if I have to write upon rather difficult topic, the best plan is to think about it with very great intensity, the greatest intensity of which I am capable, for a few hours or days, and at the end of that time, give orders, so to speak, that the work is to proceed underground. After some months, I returned consciously to the topic to find that the work has been done. Before I had discovered this technique, I used to spend the intervening months worrying because I was making no progress. I arrived at the solution, none the sooner for the worry, and the intervening months were wasted, whereas now I can devote them to other pursuits. And it says, many creators report that they get their best ideas either in the shower, while walking along the beach, or otherwise being in around water. Perhaps the flow of water leads to the flow of ideas. Other activities that often lead to creative insights is sleeping. If you have a question you'd like to answer, uh, like an answer to, or a project you're working on that you'd like to accomplish with great ease, you can instruct your mind before going to bed to open to useful information and to remember it, to be open to useful information and to remember it upon awakening. Keep a notebook and pen on your nightstand to record the insights as they come is a good idea. When you use this approach, you can quickly find yourself getting ideas that greatly surpass anything that comes to you while you are awake. And by the way, that's exactly what I do. I actually have a notebook. Well, mine is a dream notebook, but I also have a separate pad where I write down my ideas because I wake up late, late.
in the middle of the night with all so again good morning to those of you that are joining me good morning patricia thank you for joining me very early for you in new zealand all right so here we go and again i love hearing the stories of a lot, of, a lot of things, a lot of the feedback that I'm getting is really on the meditation because a lot of people think, you know, or, you know, that meditation is hard, which it is, but it takes practice. That's why it's called a practice. But the purpose, again, is to still your mind so that you can then start controlling your thoughts, which is going to help you tremendously. I'm going to go ahead and do that. All right, so now we're going to move on to the yoga portion and then immediately following we're going to go on to the meditation and it may was yesterday that for some reason the broadcast stopped right in the middle of the meditation and i didn't realize it obviously until the end of um, the meditation period so what i did do is um it's not on my facebook page but on my youtube channel i went ahead and recorded a totally separate um, video on the uh, meditation and i put it in there so if you watch it if you didn't get a chance to watch it live and you want to see the replay if you go to my youtube channel you will see the full broadcast completion recording there. All right, and while you're there, of course, subscribe, guys. And please, by all means, share this information with your family and friends.
portion. So you're going to sit in a nice comfortable position. And again, if you are sitting in a chair, make sure that your shoes are off, that your feet are grounded to the floor. You want to make sure that you're in comfortable clothes, and you want to clear your mind and relax. Focus on your breath. Do the Ujjayi breathing. So inhaling for a count of one, and exhaling for a count of two. Again, if thoughts come into your mind, gently push them aside.
release, relax, and return refreshed and calm. You done something good for yourself today. And that concludes day 23 of the Transform Your Life in 15 Minutes. Thank you for joining me. See you tomorrow, same time. Bye.